Hi. Uh, before uh, some more people maybe come and the doors close, I just want to check how playful you are today. Raise your hands who's playful. Okay, let's play a game. Come, come here. Yeah. Because you arrived first, you'll be our founder. You're the founder of our game company, okay? Yeah. Yeah. Come, more, we need more people. It's not easy to make game with just one guy. How many do I need? Okay, so you're fun. Move, make space for the others. You're gonna be our, um, let's say, co-founder, like you need business. You have the money, but you're also interested in how the founder is gonna make all these things. Come here. You're gonna be our, like, Production, head of production, okay? So you, you're hired and you're like, okay, you guys want to make a game? I can make a game for you. And who do we, who do we need more? Mm, maybe some designers. Some designers. Okay, but it's like a f the, the first meeting with the company is just starting. Who do you want to call to you know, like make the game? No, designers? Still designers? Okay. Designers are overrated. I would never invite designers. Just a, Maybe some where you have co-founder and he's, okay. he's, he's, he's bankrolling the thing. Well, let's start here. Yeah, like, come on, make, make a game. Should I make a game? Yeah, yeah you're like, this is your uh, uh, co-founder, this is your investment co-founder. You're, you're, you're like more <laughs> like a head of production, the whole thing. You're going to be uh, running the whole show. So, like, how do you guys start to make these? Have, like, you can answer that, Adley. Well, we'll obviously have really epic characters, and there's going to be an open world, and then obviously zombies, and then maybe VR, and then I'm pretty sure we can probably pop this out in like half a year, or maybe a year, maybe if we do a bit of QA at the end. and some. This is not acting. a joke. This is really how games are made. It's scary. This is how I make games. <laughs> it's really scary. <laughs> it's in a studio based on AI entirely. Yeah. Yeah. No, exactly. no artists. So we actually don't need to hire anyone now because we can just use like chat, chat, G, chat, PG, yeah, D, we're chat, we're GPT, yeah, draw, yeah, GPT, yeah, animate, yeah. GPT, code, GPT, everything, GPT. Okay. And so, what do you, as a head of production, think about this investors' requests? Uh, the investors' request. No, I mean, like uh, AI is a sole idea, and I think we can do it. Yeah, in six yeah. months or oh, less. Six uh, months. Also, can we get in on this NFT thing that everyone is doing? Yeah. Like I heard from a friend that like the blockchain or something is really cool them. right now. So can we? This just... is also how games are made, and it's also scary. And the founder has anything to say? I just want to make some awesome games that make people happy. So, okay, philanthropist, I see. Yeah. Yeah, but the stakeholders won't be happy then, so yeah. we need to, like... And you're making a game, and you hit the big problem. There's, like, a huge problem to be solved. How do you approach it? I call the team. And, yeah, he's the team. We need some more people in the team. Like, where's the developer? Come, we, we need a developer, chief developer, lead developer. Yeah, it's not a big deal. Just, like, design a map No or more playful like, people? It's not a... Oh, come on. One more. We need the developer. You. Asha, come to us. Come on. Oh, you want to be the artist, right? Hey, congratulations. We have a developer. The prompt artist. <laughs> no, this is our main lead developer. There is some trouble. and uh, it's, yeah, it's, we... not, it's not just a technical issue. It's like technical slash creative, like some feature. We are bogged down. We cannot get out of the loop. We keep brainstorming and it's always like we circle back. What do you do? I'm not sure. <laughs> um, let's do the stuff. Uh, again, please uh, repeat what, what we are doing. <laughs> we are making it. Am oh my God, I'm am I so boring? Today, sorry. <laughs> okay, so we're making a game. This is our yeah. uh, uh, founder. He wants to make beautiful games that people will enjoy. We want this is our home. money man. He's like, I want to have crazy shit like uh, yeah. zombies and cars and whatever he said. And there's the head of production who's like, yeah, 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 yeah everywhere. And I'm the and developer. You're a lead developer, yeah. You're uh, so uh, here, asking, here are the estimates for, for the very first simple thing. It will take uh, three years to do this. And 
So technical side is like. W what if we start. hire some like programmer nerds or something, and they can just like do something? It right? will take six years. <laughs> <laughs> this is also how games are made. Thank you very much. You can go back to your places. Thank you. So we had, you know, it's difficult to role play like this. I understand. So, but more or less, it would go like that. Someone will have some great idea. Some crazy guy with money will join. And then the trouble start, and no one asks the question, why? Why are we having the problem? Why are we making this game? What do we want to achieve? And it seems very ridiculous. Like, is it possible that that's the question? But yeah, as you will see from my war stories, it's entirely possible, and it's happening all the time. So you may know me from previous years. I was giving mostly narrative talks. But um, since then, I've started doing more consultancy, more um, game and narrative designer consultancy and production consultancy. And I encounter clients with exactly these problems. Like they hit the snag, they have a problem which is partly technical, partly creative, some feature or something. They get stuck with story or whatever. And it's, uh, there's no solution. And often, I noticed that it's usually the same kind of being stuck like my writing students were. Like they write, 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 and they're like, oh, I'm stuck here. And I just asked them, like, why are you even stuck? Like, oh, in fact, I'm not stuck. I just missed, did something wrong in the sense like I forgot what I want to make. I, I forgot what's the final goal, or I forgot that this element actually doesn't belong at all. And of course, I'm having a problem because I'm trying to fit, I don't know one more whale into Captain Ahab's adventure and like the one other whale doesn't fit the story. And so of course there's one way. So let me start by uh, stating the obvious. No one likes the question why. Uh, I talk to business people, especially to marketers, and I ask them like, why do you not like the question why? And individual developers, for, for, for them it doesn't even occur. They're like, I'm just going to make stuff I want. And blessed are they, because they can just do it. And they don't need to ask the question why. Well, they do, because everyone who creates anything, any kind of artist, any kind of coder, plumber, everyone needs to know why they're doing what they're doing, or it won't be done. But uh, small teams, they often like engaged in these kind of things, like I want zombies, I want cars, I want to fix my problems, I want to hire less designers or whatever. And then the question why is forgotten. But for the big corporations, it was like a huge no-no. Like uh, one of the guys who, who was doing marketing for big corps said, like, never ask this question. Never ask why. Because if you remember the movie Cube, the Cube just exists and no one knows why. And that's like corp what corporations are like. So don't ask why, because it will disrupt everything. But often a solution to all their problems is just one little question. Why? Also, modern world pre prefers action. Like, let's do it, let's do it. Don't overthink, just jump in the fire. I mean, we all love Agile, right? And that's how Agile was created. Like, okay, don't wait for everything to you know, come together. Just go and do it. And it, it does have merit. It does indeed. But everyone kind of forgets that it has merit if you already have clarity on why you're doing things you do and what do you want to make. And only then you can like stop overthinking and kick yourself into the action. Because, you know, no one wants to be paralyzed in overthinking. So, so like go, go, go is not a bad thing, but if you don't ask why, why, why before, you're gonna, you're gonna lose it. The thing is, everything we want to do requires energy, intention, and initiative. Uh, and let's switch to um, some nicer example, like dating. So if you have appropriate amount of energy, you're going to you know, radiate some vibes. If you don't have energy, you're not going to be noticed. That's a given. Like, okay, you have to you know, push energy. And the same is with uh, companies, corporations, teams, individuals. You have to gather your energy to you know, make forward. The next thing is initiative. And this uh, modern world, like go, 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 just do it, agile, that's solving the problem of initiative. Just, you know, go it, go do it. If you like someone and you don't approach them ever, 
you know, you're going to be ever living in delusion that they might like you back and, you know, you're kind of making stories, blah, blah, but nothing's going to happen because you didn't show initiative. But then what everyone forgets is that you have to have intention, clear intention. And I think, you know, uh, uh, I think girls can confirm this. You know, many times, like some guy will, will master the energy and master the in initiative and be like, <laughs> like, what do you want? I don't know. You nice, and it, everything fails because there's no clear, clear intention. So, why is solving problem of intention and energy? Because if you know what you want to do, if you see it clearly, you're going to master the energy and do it. Oftentimes, in big studios, small studios or individuals, if you don't see clarity ahead of you, if you don't see what you have to do, or if you don't want to see, then you simply cannot master any energy. Uh, conducting a lot of people is like the same as conducting a few people. It's all matter of organization. But... Bigger, the bigger the cooperation gets, the lower the energy of the team is often I, that I've encountered in the sense that like, well, I'm here to earn my salary and to enjoy my benefits and to play a little pool with my coworkers. And yeah, not really, it's not about being interested or the investment. I, I'm sure that, you know, everyone's a professional and they're here to, they're on their work to, on their job to, to work. But without clarity of what are we doing, or being bogged down in the, like, our little tasks, it's not possible to you know, move forward. And often, as we saw in this little sketch before, um, there's going to be a huge gap between the stakeholders, including the producers, the leaders of, uh, of production, the leader of teams, and you know, all, the, all, all the top management. Like, CEO will be like, I don't know, make games, go, make games. I hired you to make games. And they will say, oh, but we have a problem. We cannot solve this. Like, ah, I don't know, hire more people, you know, <laughs> as, as we saw it happening. So, yeah, uh, having clarity coming from question why will give you also more energy to build. Why is a very unpopular question because it often means going back to basics, shifting focus from the outcome to internal, intrinsic. Like a lot of uh, 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 companies I uh, 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 worked with or um, who were my clients, they were like, we want to make a game and want to make money and that's all the banters. Uh, yeah, that's true, but that's the outcome. Uh, let's focus on like, what are we building? And believe it or not, it's, it's, it sounds like, oh, it's a ridiculous problem. I, I've never encountered it. But <clears throat> just a week ago, I had two... Investors, co-founders, guys with the idea, spare time, money, resources, blah, blah. They were like, we have this set of values and we want to make something. And I was like, okay, what do you want to make? We want to make something for the companies that are interested in having some things. And I was like, okay, but what are we building? Well, you tell us, you know, we have values, we have money, you know, we just want things done. So, so I realized like, okay, I, I'm, I'm not going to be... So it's like, it's crazy, like, I, I, all of a sudden, I'm like a dream architect. I'm going to turn their dreams into reality, like, take their values and create a product out of it. Sounds cool, but then I'm the only guy who knows why, which is not really the best situation for them. Because once I, I reveal the sheep-powered uh, um, cannon, they will be like, well, this is not what we ordered. Like, oh, come on, your vision, you wanted sheep flying all over the space. Like, no, 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 that's not what we said. We said we love sheep. Like, yeah, this is sheep-propelled cannon. And that's how things, you know, get messy the more you go. So, uh, question why clarifies the vision and helps with communication, helps with documentation as well. And documentation is important. Not, you know, like crucial, I would say, because uh, gaming is, of course, are very iterative process, but it's important. But it can also help you uh, uh, manage people. And, you know, if there is a, if you can manage your own intention, in, uh, 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 if you can manage your own initiative, your own energy in a small team, you know, every group effort, like if everyone is, has the same why or similar why, it moves forward. And if there's an entire company which has a strong why, then you can make really, really good products. And... I want to say kudos to 11-bits Polish studio who has, 
I don't know what they do, but they have a huge company, but they have really strong wise, and that's why their games, their games rock because it's like clearly made with purpose. I love, uh, I love their games. So how is the pro how is this problem of lack of way manifesting? Well, it manifests in different ways, but I will just tell you a, a, a few stories uh, from uh, my experience and like what is the problem and. In the end, we'll, 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 we'll give you, I'll give you some suggestions because solutions may be a strong word. So, I'm not going to ask you any weird questions, I promise. Yeah, thank you. One more, one more. We don't need microphones. That's meant for four games. So, as you see from the station, you get what we're going to We're going to play a game called uh, Chinese Chinese Whispers, which was uh, at some point declared like, oh, that's offensive. Uh, and then that was called Russian Scandal, which was oh, also offensive. So the final name of the game is the Whisper Challenge. You know, it's like the game rules. I believe so, yeah. I do things with the bastards. I do things with bastards. Yes. Fantastic! It's I have a nose and two pastas. <laughs> Thank you very much. You can step down. Thank you. Uh, it, it, it sounds like a joke, but uh, one of the uh, problems I've encountered is that lack of cl clarity trickles down. So, Found, founder is, has like some vague vision about making the world better by creating games, and then he tells this vision to co-founder. Co-founder is like, hmm, ding, 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 money. Okay, yeah, we'll definitely make some games. And then the vision trickles to head of production or whatever other major stakeholders are there, and then to the team leads, and then to team members, and in the end we have doing things with bastards instead of making pasta. So yeah, uh, my client basically is, um, uh, they want to make some kind of um, mental health games. They want to have games which are um, in this also games, but also the mental health tools, but also like self-therapy tools. And they have like really strict framework that, that they want to base this whole thing on. Like it has to be this, scientific paper reads 200 pages and understand what you want to say and that's like that's that's a, that's a thing and 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 they said like can you join us as a head of production and like fix our processes and flows and blah blah, blah. here's our gdd and here's our demo and it was <laughs> exactly like uh, this uh, whisper challenge like their vision was to create a chimera, like unicorn, of be, be, be between you know serious game for a like real game for casual gamers, which is in, which is in the same time self help game, which is in the same time therapeutical tool based on science. And I'm not saying it's not possible, but but their game design document was like, you are at the garbage dump and there is a lot of crashed cars around you, and it's like what? The, this doesn't really. I mean this. The, and there were like post-apocalyptic uh, 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 locations and some characters and some things. And it's like, okay, let me play the demo. Maybe I'll understand. And then the demo is this open world mushroom infused 
art, <laughs> like everything is joyfully glorious, you know, everything is smeared or the, and you just frolic around and it's like, oh my God. And then the name of the game is Inner Child. And it's like, this, this doesn't make any sense. So I had to, you know, take them by the ear and draw, dra drag them back to the planning phase. Like, okay, why are we making this? What do you guys want to build? Blah, blah, blah. And slowly start from there. And of course, the rest of the team was shocked. Like, we would have like developers like, okay, what's my next task? Oh, we're not making this? What are we making now? Oh, oh, I suddenly I'm not so interested in this. And like, a, a lot of nasty things happen. And that's why no one wants to ask the questions why. Because when you start asking questions why, a lot of nasty things happen. But they're necessary because if they started making this game, it would be a huge disaster. They would build basically open world uh, something, something with one guy, only no artists, sadly in this case, and like five game designers and two stakeholders very much interested in messing things up. So it would be, a, I, I, I'm not sure, they would waste a lot of money and time. Another thing that can block your progress uh, if you're not asking the question why, is doing things like by the book. Like, let's copy what everyone else is doing. That is the way. We need to have a story. Like, like why? Because <laughs> games, stories, like, no, your game does not need a story. I want a story in my game. And I'm not joking. It's like every other time I'm being invited as an art designer, and I know I'm, I'm like digging my own grave. Like I, I'm coming to people to, to enlighten them that their story is not, the story is not needed. But really, a lot of times, especially if you start from mechanics, and if your mechanics are good, if they if they're entertaining and playable, like in in, in prototype format, do consider storytelling through other means. Storytelling through level design, storytelling through level progression, storytelling through uh, uh, graphics or whatever. But you know, don't don't insert dialogues and stories and characters just because stories. It's 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 not gonna it's gonna not gonna help you. The same is with um, with any other feature. I had a, a, a clients who made amazing resource management game, and it was so fun exploring, gathering resources, making recipes, somehow they made it so, so fun and mysterious and like, wow. And then they had like this very boring combat system where you would like read the numbers, like minus one, minus one, minus one, minus 10, minus one, minus 10, minus one, minus 10, minus 10. And then the combat ends and you get no resources from it and you go on. And it's like, this game doesn't need combat. And it's like, but combat, every game has combat. We also need to have combat. No, you don't. This game is fun without combat. I mean, combat is literally not contributing anything to your game. But this is the way everyone has combat. So yeah, uh, also sounds like, oh, I would never do this. I'm way too clever. But it can happen if you don't ask the question, why? Why do you need this feature? Why do you need this? Uh, oftentimes, especially in bigger teams, when there is a lot of collaborative uh, uh, creating, like brainstorming and stuff, I saw meetings after meetings after meetings where like, we circle around, we, we discuss this feature, how to solve the problem, and then like, why? Why do we need this feature? Oh, in fact, we don't. Ta -da! Six months of work down the drain, but we'll reuse it somewhere else, right? Yeah, sure. So, so yeah. Uh, so my next uh, client did wanted to make a um, 4x MMO game with NFTs because why not? And and they the, the, the founder actually there had a good had a good vision. He was he was gonna make game he wants to play. And that's legit. Like he's bankrolling it, so he gets to you know pick the pick the color of drapes or whatever. So. But his vision was a bit unorthodox. He wanted a single player multiplayer game, like multiplayer game for single players. Like all the benefits of multiplayer with like single player. Like, and it's like it, it, it took time to, to, to understand what he meant, but he was like, I want to rule the galaxy, kill everyone else, but I want to do it alone. No alliances, no groups, no, no high school projects, you know, home, uh, homeworks and, and stuff. 
because he's like, I don't like alliances. Every time I join the alliance, I do everything by myself. I don't want to do this. Okay, so he's uh, the, the, in that game. There was a lot of features created, a lot of assets created, a lot of things created that simply don't fit this vision. And no matter what we think about this vision, that it's crazy, it's like, why would you do that or whatever? Uh, it, it's, it's, it's his reason why. And it, he, he just couldn't explain this why to everyone else. So that start, they start making, you know, assets and elements and features to support this vision. But once it was done, it's actually quite a cool game where you kind of, you know, compete with other players, but you're not bothered by, you know, chats or, or alliances or groups. You just played, you know, every man for himself. It has, it has some merit, like, you know, there, I remember there was a game uh, called Rock Simulator. You are a rock and day and night, you're just, you know, you're observing your rock. No, well, yeah, I mean, why not? If he wants to have multiplayer, single player game, why not? The next problem is the problem when, so, so in this case, previous case, uh, vision was strange, but the uh, founder had the strong clarity of the, uh, and the strong vision, you know, what he wants to do. And uh, in this case, uh, one of the problems that can, uh, can crop up is either lack of clarity of the vision or the lack of the vision holder itself or how the vision is sort of chained down the, you know, from, from top management, stakeholders, lead, team leads, blah, blah, down. And uh, it reminded me of that, I think it's Monty Python sketch or something, where they like, they huddle together, they make a plan, and they're like, yeah, yeah, go. And then boom, they, everyone just dies or, you know, does something stupid. And I believe, I believe you all have been at least at one meeting where like, the, the agenda of this meeting is to decide what are we going to do in this meeting. And then like, okay, we, we, we get the clarity at least on that. And from there, we kind of, you know, is everything clear? Yes. Uh, everyone has tasks? Yes. And then we go and five minutes later, like, oh, what, 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 was, what was I supposed to do again? And oftentimes it's because uh, um, the... The way the meetings are conducted, obviously, oftentimes it's about, you know, um, inadequate leader or there's, it, there's no clarity of who's the vision holder. And there was, there was even a game called Writer Will Do Something. Do you, did you hear about this game? It's a small text-based game. You can find it on each IO, I think. The Writer Will Do Something is a real story about a AAA project, unnamed, of course, where they were kind of stuck how to do the, the things. And then every major stakeholder was like, well, of course we have writer. He will invent some things and it will fix everything. Like he'll create super intro and we'll just make it into cinematic and it will just iron out all the problems. And, and yeah, often the vision holding is placed in the hands of someone who has no power whatsoever, because believe it or not, Narrative designers and game writers are the lowest on the food chain in the in every company. Like only guys who are who are lower than narrative designers are sound engineers because no one knows what they do. They're like, ah, make your bippity boppity sounds. And like so, so it's like <sighs> the writer is then you know attending the meetings and then they make some crazy uh, uh, feature creep uh, decision. And he's like, but that's not according to our story. Ah, shut up! Oh, story doesn't matter. It's games. So yeah, it's interesting how story is used, like, oh, we need a story, and then like, you know, big, the bigger corporation gets like, oh, fuck story, we don't need story. Or like, oh yeah, you'll, you'll invent something, you'll fix it up. So yeah, this is the real statistics. Daydreaming, generally finding it unproductive. Mm. And the same is with uh, the same is with uh, creative meetings. I mean, brainstorming another kind of collaborative cooperation. And of course, there are different. Um, but but this this thing with meetings and especially uh, creative meetings, it's like allergies. Like everyone has them, 
And everyone claims that they have a super solution that's going to fix it, but nothing works and you're still blotched and, you know, bloated and spotted and <laughs> coughing or whatever. So, yeah, um, everything would be much nicer if someone went to the why and I started asking why questions and disrupting things and like, hey, guys, you know, can someone be the real vision holder? And I, if you ask me, I have no idea who it has to be. Maybe some product guy, maybe production manager, product manager, whatever, I don't know. Maybe they can kind of, you know, shift it. And it's often, it's often, I've seen this happening like uh, with different stages, like the stake uh, uh, repeated this, a bit, a bit repetition of this Chinese whisper story. Like the, the there would be meeting and then um, founder who has a strong vision would tell his vision in broad strokes. Like, this is what I want to happen. But then, like, how do you interpret this? How do you translate this global vision into, like, what do we need to do, or, you know, as tasks? So somewhere, something gets lost in translation. And that's why this uh, problem with meetings exists, because communication is quite difficult, especially when you are daydreaming or, you know, consider this unproductive. But also, uh, what I've seen often is, like, um, the question why is actually the uh, 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 sounds a bit philosophical. Like, why do we make this? Do we really know why? And it, and it also kind of sounds kind of assholey. Like, wait, wait, wait. Why do we do this again? Like, ah, oh, shut up. We are going. You know, we're making this. Uh, uh. But the fact is, uh, oftentimes people who gather at one place, they didn't gather to do what the work specification says. Like, I'm sure there's people who came here on JC to party, drink beer, you know, woo, woo, woo. So, like, not attending the talks at all. It happens. It, it's the same is with, the, with teams and companies. You would have people who just, you know, come, sit, do their tasks, wait for their salary and, like... But also, it's not like... Uh, uh, also, this is opposite. Okay, I, I'm here, I want to be seen, I want to be heard. Especially if you're adding new people to the team. I have not seen a single collaborative co uh, creativity meeting with new guy or girl who didn't say like, oh, well, I've inspected your work so far and I think it's shit. We should do it this way. And then like pff, totally new, new stuff happens. Because everyone wants their idea to be heard. They want to prove themselves that they're also smart. They want to prove that they saw the problem. But they're also sometimes right. They have fresh approach to your... Because they are not burdened by lack of why. They're like... Asking, huh, what are we doing here? And this question, what are we doing here? That prompted them to, you know, find some correction that they can make, gives them this edge. So sometimes they're like, oh, I want to just show myself off. But sometimes they have right because they ask the question, why, in fact? From some personal reason, maybe, you know, they wanted to improve their status in the company. But no matter what, that's what happened. And they can really be cr uh, creative and supportive and helpful. Next problem. Yeah, it, it gets funnier, I know. <laughs> but that's what it is. I, I swear these are like, if I didn't have NDA, I could even show you like the, the, the faces and, and screenshots, but this is like really what's, what's going on. So um, one of the things that happens is that uh, one of the stakeholders who affects the process is con considered infallible. So, like, we would have meetings with CEO, and she would be like, oh, I want this, this, and this, and this, and this, and this, and this. And everyone would think that that's what she really means. And then we would go making it and present it, and she's like, oh, this is shit. I, I didn't want that. Why did you create this? I want something else. So it's the same thing that, you know, the client knows what they want, right? Freelan any freelancers here? No? Everyone works in the company. Lucky bastards. So, um, yeah, uh, if you ask any freelancing friends, those are those people who are you know, somewhere in the living in the shadows, they, of, they will often tell you, like, I can't, I can't do what the client asks. I have to, you know, speak to them like a child. Like, what do you want? Really? Are you sure? I'm, I'm going to give you a little bit, and then you will tell me if you like it or not. And then, yes, I will. Of course, client doesn't know what they want. 
I mean, there is a reason my favorite t-shirt says feedback survivor. Yeah. So, so basically, uh, it's not easy to know what you want. Uh, uh, there is one really fantastic uh, sci-fi story about the planet Eden, like, you know, beautiful planet, planet with uh, beautiful nature, and everyone gets a supercomputer AI, and they, the computer will grant all the wishes, and everyone will, you know, live spectacularly. <clears throat> and so one politician, of course, you know, big, fat, corrupt politician, he was like, oh, I want to retire on that planet. And he landed his uh, supercomputer on a beautiful mountain peak and you know, installed it there. And when he was you know, looking around, he saw that some people walk around in rags and some people are just driving bicycles. The other guys are driving super luxury cars. And he was like, Whoa, why would someone want you know, knitted sweater? Or like, why would someone want to ride the bike around? This is stupid. I'm going to build beautiful villa. So he steps before the computer, he says, build me a beautiful villa with five bedrooms and seven pools. And computer asks, like, okay, what kind of villa, what kind of pool, what, what, what would you want them made of? And then the guy realized that he has to actually know the answers to be able to, you know, do the proper question that he would have to have all the skills so that he can get everything he wants. So it's not easy. I'm not, I'm not trying to shame the founders or uh, CEOs or people who just, you know, give impetus to the project, but it's not easy to know what you want. <clears throat> um, the problem is when there is no one designated as a vision holder, when there is no one designated to, you know, uh, brief the whole thing, to ask the questions why, and then <clears throat> There is also a problem if there is, for any reason, hierarchy or authority or whatever, you don't question this. So, like, our CEO wants, like, fluffy pink stuff, but when we made them, she's like, no, um, blue, I told you blue, or uh, this is not what I wanted. It's not her fault. We should have, like, asked, like, are you sure? Why? Why, 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 why? Okay, do, 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 do. we build it. Here's your product. So, so yeah. Often it would it would it would happen in, a, um, uh, and it's and it's also not easy to, for people to connect the dots, even in the uh, on the same project in the same company. Oftentimes, um, I would come up with a solution, present it, and then the CEO and the producer or um, pro product manager were like, um, we don't like it. But then I explained to them like this is made. Because this, because this, because this, because it connects here, it connects, da, 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 da. and be like, oh, we like it. It's, a, it's the greatest idea ever. So they are not infallible. They need to have clarity. If they don't, I will have clarity, and my clarity will win because I, I, I know what I'm doing and I can explain why. And if that happens, like, you know, there can be some progress. But, uh, uh, very important for any kind of co collaboration, even if you're collaborating just with yourself, is to try to help yourself or them, whoever they are, to know a bit more what they want, to offer them some ideas, some suggestions, to and to back your solutions with why, because that's the strongest uh, uh, asset you're going to have. Someone can make beautiful cake, and someone can say, "Well, this is not what I envisioned," but if you know why, if you know, if you can explain, if you can, you will find, you know, the more more receptive to that. Sometimes, you know, it takes a bit of education to recognize if something's well made or not. Like if you show me a code, I will be like, oh, yeah, it's a code. But like, is it good or not? I, I cannot tell. This, yeah, no words. We'll just we'll just admire this image for. One minute. And the last story I have for you. Oh, no. Uh, is um, about bo being bogged down in technicalities. So lack of clarity on why can often have the team members, teams, yourself, 
chasing the train, chasing the flow of some particular solution you want to create. Some deep technicality, something you're passionate about, you're involved very much about. And then you're simply building stuff that is not, is not needed. Uh, I had a client who made amazing progress in RPG games. So they're inventing tools which are like, oh my god, I as a game master and as an RPG enthusiast, I was like, I want to buy your engine now and build stuff in it because this is amazing. And they, well, they were like, oh, okay, we need to showcase this technology, we want to, you know, uh, sell it to uh, studios, license it, whatever. And they want to build a demo to showcase this, this technology. And the, 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 the demo they created was, you know, like, it played like totally any other game. In fact, it played like a bad RPG game, like totally generic RPG game. And when I asked them, like, whoa, 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 what is this? The, the, your idea of showcasing your technology is not visible in this product. And, and of course, because uh, uh, a management was like detached, they put all of uh, power in hands of engineers and engineers like, ah, it works perfectly. What? It runs. It, it, if, you, if you look the code, it's beautiful. Like, I, I, I believe so, but you will never showcase this. If, if, you know, there's, I cannot see the features of your beautiful engine. You know. ah, what you suggest is outrageous. You want us to, you know, showcase something in a very unorthodox way. This is the way, remember, that this also a fallacy. And so in the end, they didn't do the demo. They didn't showcase it. Other companies, like, made better things, and they lost their edge on the market because they, they didn't uh, come, out, come out with technology first. And it, it sounds like a horror story, but it happens. Uh, I don't know if you remember the game called Facade. It was really like breakthrough in AI, early AI uh, technology. And it played like a regular adventure game, like you type, say hi, say blah, blah. And the game had already simple premise. You, you arrive at a couple's uh, dinner and you talk to one guy, you talk to one girl and there's some three possible outcomes in the end. Like either they kick you out because you were rude or you help them you know, like reconnect and uh, heal their relationship or you break them up. And uh, the technology underneath is really amazing in the sense that if you ask an uh, NPC to pass you a glass of wine, the code will actually be like, okay, I must question what my face should be to represent the proper answer to this question. And then the guy will smile. And then it will be like, is my hand free? Is my other hand free? Do I drop something if my hand is not free? Like very complex technological thing. And it was really amazing, great game. But in the end, a, a kid with scratch could, could, could have done it like, blah, 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 dialogue three, blah, 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 ta -da, the same thing. So they didn't do it, of course, to, to showcase their technology. They do it for some other scientific reasons, but yeah. This is also what happens if you don't ask the question why, because question why is basically gateway to answering the question what. What do you want? What do you want? What do you want to make? And oftentimes in any creative endeavor, you can get so engrossed in the love of it, in the passion for it, in, in, in your desire to do something that, that simple question like why or what are you going to make fails. Um, more than often in uh, game design features, in um, narrative, when people get stuck, ask for help, ask them like, okay, what, what, what are you trying to say? What are you trying to express? I don't know. Okay, done. Well, let, we have to go back to why and what, blah, blah, and then I can help you because that's how you measure, that's how you can be sure that the feature, character, element, code, product is needed and is going to be successful because like we want to add wings to our mugs okay why because when people fly they want their mugs to fly along with them fine we'll make it but if there's like no question no answer to why or what are you trying to make it's going to ruin everything you will not know 
if the element even fits or not. So let's quickly go over some solutions. First is back to basics. If you get stuck, go back to documentation, go back to organization. Can you streamline your meetings? Can you streamline your decision making? Can you designate someone to be a vision holder? Can you do, do once more over the game design document? Can you check your processes? Can you go back to the vision? And most importantly, if you're making games, what are the pillars of fantasy? Pillars of fantasy, three to five exact sentences that describe what do you want your players to feel, think, experience. I know it sounds basic, but god awful lot of games are made without any idea what do you want your player to feel, to experience, what role do you want them to take. And often it's mixed, like, oh, he will be soccer team manager slash trainer slash business owner slash soda vendor. No, it's going to make a, a big mess. Whoever made focused game on, not, it doesn't have to be one thing, but like, what do you want to, what kind of fantasy you want to sell to your players? Because games are apps. Games are apps. Apps have, you know, solving some problems, solving some pain. The same is with the, with, with the game and the player. Like, what pain is your game solving? And if you're blessed to be individual game de uh, developer, then the, problem that your app game is solving is your need. Like, oh, I want to make strategy game. Do it. If you're not, if your company is small team, blah, 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 then you have to see what pain are you solving for your players. They want to feel smart. They want to feel cool. They want to feel, I don't know, the previous talk was very good about it. Like, they don't want to feel stupid. Okay, then let's, let's entertain them that way. Always go back to why. When in doubt, ask yourself and your teammates why. Use this often. Be this guy who's thrown out of the window, please. And if you don't want to be that guy, appoint someone to be that guy. There is no shame in, 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 in saying, okay, guys, let's appoint Ricardas to be our designated devil and he will start asking nasty questions and we will not kick him out of the uh, window we'll appreciate whatever he comes up with because it is very important to have maverick on your team it is very important to have someone who's going to be questioning you know things and and finding the way to 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 track back like where if you're stuck with certain feature or certain element, where did this element originate from? How did you want it to connect it? What kind of, you know, how can we integrate it into existing loops? A lot of games that I've seen, especially in mobile segment, is like, oh, we have bad core loop. We're going to add feature that's going to heal this problem. And then they add more features to heal more problems. And then uh, goodbye. No, no, not possible. So, yeah, do appoint someone to poke holes. And also, we need glorious leadership. So, my last uh, suggestion is to um, make sure that you are a strong leader, that you're a strong visionary, that you hold the vision if you're in the position, or that you seek someone who is. They recommend them to your team leads, like, hey, can this, he, this guy has everything under control. In, in uh, uh, one of my clients who has really good team, they have perfect project manager girl. She, she knows everything about the whole project. She's like a living encyclopedia. And she's not used uh, enough. She, she's not in the leader role. She's like a living computer. And we just ask her questions like, okay, remind me, how was it? And then she's like, calculates everything in her head and gives the results. Like, oh, it's amazing. But you also need the leaders to be like this. It's oftentimes that they see that the more you climb up the hierarchy, the more incompetent you become. It's, it's, a, it's a sociological uh, story for another talk. But like, the more team lead, uh, regional lead, whatever, the more clueless you'll get. That, that, that's how we get presidents that are stupid. Like, oh, I, uh, I'm president now. I don't have to know anything. Oh, there's a war. Oh, yeah, fix it. You know? and, and sadly, big companies can, can, can grow like this. So uh, always try to be uh, 
finding, voting for, supporting, or creating good cascade of vision holding, like who is responsible for which part of the vision, who is your appointed white person, who can you know poke holes without any. Uh, I mean, there is a reason that kings in mythology had you know fools, because no one can say to the king you're wrong, except the fool. You're wrong, and then the king if he's smart, he's like, mm. and if he's stupid, so behead him. That's why no one wants to be a fool. So I'm not advocating that you should be fools in your teams, but do have in mind that if you are running a team or being a team leader or something, do, do appoint someone to be sacred fool. Because sacred fools will ask bad, nasty questions. And of course, in the end, if nothing else works for you, you can ask experts to help you. Thank you very much. <laughs>